Hi there and welcome back. My name is Gardner. I've run the YouTube channel Gardner Bryant for the last seven years, and in that time I've learned quite a bit about video editing on Linux. I've made a career out of video editing on Linux, in fact, and I wanted to share some of the cool things that I've learned with you. In this video, we're going to talk about six things you need to know about color correction. Let's get started. First, you'll want to make sure that your camera's white balance is set correctly. Use a slate, a white balance card, or even just a piece of paper at the beginning of every shot or when lighting changes, and use that to set your camera's white balance accordingly. Now, every camera is going to be a little bit different, and it would be uh, a daunting task to even cover a handful of them, so I'm going to leave how to figure that out up to you. But if you're using something like a smartphone to capture your footage, which is a legitimate way of uh, doing video recording, then uh, the smartphone should take care of the white balance stuff for you. But I can't stress this enough, setting your white balance uh, before you start recording is going to save you a lot of time and heartache later on. Another critical component of doing color correction uh, is Again, before you get to the post-production part, you want to make sure that you have the exposure in your camera set correctly as well. Again, if you're using a smartphone, this will probably be handled for you in most situations, um, but you'll want to make sure that nothing is being blown out. But if you're using a DSLR, make sure that you're not losing information in the highlights and shadows of your scene. If you can pull up a histogram on your camera and you're able to see straight lines at the beginning and the end of the histogram, you know that you're losing information uh, as these things are being overblown in light or crushed in darkness. Also, if you have a camera with uh, raw output or log color encoding, uh, you're going to have a much easier time getting the exact look that you're going for, but this is admittedly a luxury for a lot of people. Now let's talk about the actual post-production process of color correction. First, let's cover the basics of the color workspace in Caden Live. Now, in the default layout, on the left, you're going to see the composition and effects stack. This is the third thing that you need to know. Your color correction process is going to be done using effects in Caden Live, and each effect combines on top of the last. You can use any of the effects in the color and image correction header to adjust the colors of your image, but I find that the best two are going to be lift, gamma, and gain, and levels. The fourth thing that you need to know about are the special color correction tools that you can use to help you grade your scene. This is the RGB parade. This shows the balance of each color, red, green, and blue, in the preview monitor. You'll want to pay special attention to the min and max values displayed for each color here. They'll dictate which properties of your color correction effect that you want to manipulate to balance out the look of your scene. Next up, below the RGB parade, you'll see the vector scope. Now, this is all about the color that's contained in your image. If you see a wide spread of color, your image will be very saturated. If it's a modest spread, your color will be more muted. You'll note that there are little circles in here. The inner ring of circles here are representative of the broadcast safe color saturations, while the outer ring represents full saturation of that color. Then there's the histogram. The histogram shows the frequency and amplitude of colors in your scene. This is easily my favorite tool when doing color correction as it shows variances and spikes in color. The last thing that we need to talk about is, of course, actually making the adjustments to the color in your scene. First, let's talk about the lift gamma gain effect. Apply this effect to any clip or to a track in your timeline. When you do so, you'll see three color wheels and three brightness sliders, each pair labeled with lift, gamma, and gain. Lift controls the dark levels in your clip. The gamma controls the midtones along a power function, where dark colors tend to stay dark while brights get exponentially brighter. And finally, gain controls the entire image's brightness. By moving this black circle around any of the color wheels, you'll start to adjust the saturation of each level in your image. This can be useful if you want to make modest or not so modest changes to your image overall. As you're making adjustments, pay attention to the RGB parade and the histogram. You'll start to see that as you manipulate the parameters in the lift gamma gain effect, the output in the RGB parade and histogram changes in real time. A general rule of thumb is to balance out the highlights in your RGB parade so that they're relatively even across the board. See how the highlight here is in the same point in all three color channels when color correction is applied? This lends itself to a nice balanced look. Now, if we disable the grading, you'll see that the RGB parade looks different and the highlighted areas are no longer balanced. Now, I want to end this video with the levels effect. Levels allow you to select a specific color channel or luminance channel and manipulate its values along a gamma function. 
For example, if we see here that the red in the red channel is a little too hot compared to green or blue, we can apply the level effect to the clip or track, select the red channel in the effect, and then adjust the gamma parameter until the highlights and the RGB parade align. You can then add another level effect and adjust another channel. Keep in mind that these adjustments compound on each other within the effects stack from the top to the bottom. I find with the work that I do that the level tool is the easiest effect to understand. However, as you gain experience with the lift, gamma, and gain effect, you'll start to notice that it makes more sense and it becomes a very powerful asset to have. But yeah, that's going to do it for now. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't seen it already, check out the previous episodes in this series and maybe catch a few of the next episodes as well. But anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.